welcome into the ONTV Fantasy Football League podcast. We are past week six. We're already moving on to week seven. We're about to hit the halfway point of the fantasy football season. Wow. How crazy is that? Yeah. Um, so there's a lot to talk about um, as the bye weeks have continued on. There's only a couple teams on bye this week. Um, Dallas and... Oh, who's the other team? <laughs> I'm so bad at bye weeks. But I'll look it up. I know Dallas was one, and then um, I believe there's one other team. I don't think there's – it's not a big bye week for sure. Um, uh, Chicago and Dallas are on a okay. bye week this week. Chicago, right. Um, and so Dallas, they probably need a bye week after the Lions game. Uh, they need some time off, I would assume. Um, and. Ooh. They got humiliated. Yeah, and I think there's a lot, even if you're in a deeper league, so I know a lot of times when we're talking about shallow leagues, I think there's a lot of deeper league waiver options this week, which will be interesting to see, even though there's, you know, you're you're probably a little bit less likely to need um, a waiver wire pickup this week because there's only two teams on by, but those two teams have some significant uh, fantasy value. From their teams, DeAndre Swift has been great. Um, CeeDee Lamb's been pretty good. Dak Prescott has been okay. But just two better teams that are going to be on bye this week. Um, so, Joe, how was your fantasy week? Um, spoiler alert, we are going to talk about your matchup first once <laughs> again. So that's always a good sign. In the ONTV League, I uh, bounced back nicely uh, after a humiliating loss last week to Ian. Um, still uh, at the uh, top of the standings with a five on one record. So I'm really happy about that. I didn't do so well in the uh, other leagues that I'm in. Um, but the only one that matters is the ON TV league. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. Uh, I was affected a little bit by buys in week six. I had to bench, uh, Kyron Williams, who's been playing really well for me. I think he's had a touchdown in every game this season. So it was tough benching him. Um, but, uh, my team came through and, uh, led the league in points and, uh, yeah, really happy with the performance this week. Well, isn't that great for you? <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I had an zero and three week this week. It's the first zero and three week that I've had. Um, I think in a long time, to be honest, I've, I've had pretty good luck the last couple seasons. So I guess I was just due for it. The Owen TV league, I think maybe I got a little too cute. Maybe I didn't, but I did have a lot of tough decisions because of bye weeks and injuries and things like that. So we'll get into that when we get into my matchup. But uh, it was a tough weekend of football for me. Luckily, the Lions won, and luckily I won a little bit of money in some DFS. None of my bets went through, so I kind of went even for the weekend money-wise. But oh well, it happens, <laughs> and uh, we move on. So let's get right into that matchup with uh, Joe taking on Malik, who is now rightfully the sixth-place team. It's like he's psychic. And so let's talk about it. But uh, what went right for your team? Everything? <laughs> You're Just about. you the again. Uh, Godwin is quickly establishing himself as one of the elite receivers in the NFL. Uh, he had a monster game, his best game of the season, uh, scoring th over 35 points. Uh, two touchdowns. Uh, he was just so impressive. He led my team. Uh, the Niners looked really good. Uh, if you had uh, Debo, if you yeah. had Ayuk, maybe uh, not so much. But, or maybe Jordan Mason. Uh, it was Mason, a weird. who got hurt. And it was it's really odd because he got hurt in the first half, and at halftime, the sideline reporter interviewed the, the coach and said, what's Mason's status? And he said, he's good to go. And he came in and played one play and then never saw the field again, even though he stood on the sideline with his helmet on and was kind of rotating his shoulder and uh, never made it onto the field. And you had said, well, you know, the Niners were playing pretty well that may they didn't necessarily need to risk further injury. But it was very odd that it, it was said he was good to go and then he never uh, finished the game. Uh, so, yeah, if you had Mason, you were one of the uh, few teams this week that lost a player mid-game or early in the game, mm -hmm. which affected your total. Luckily, before Mason left, he had some. Uh, he, he had a pretty decent game, like 70 yards rushing, something yeah. like that. Um, but, yeah, so Purdy and uh, Debo, for me, they combined for a total of 44 points. 
And uh, Brees Hall had a pretty decent game on Monday night, scored uh, over 21 points for me. Uh, probably the biggest dud, uh, just as a bye week fill in was tank Bigsby, who everybody was high on, uh, only scored two points. Uh, that was a bit of a surprise cause yeah. he was, he was kind of rolling. Yeah. And Jacksonville um, is just, uh, they're pitiful. Uh, yeah. I have ETN, which you'll see Malik has ETN. He got negative 0.1 points. Um, he got hurt pretty early, but like Chicago's a good pass defense. They're not as good at the run defense, but it didn't seem like it mattered. The Jaguars just couldn't do anything. Um, so yeah, it was it's a disappointing outing from the Jaguars as a whole. Uh, my Dallas tight end uh, Ferguson, who has been playing well all season, I was expecting uh, big numbers from Dallas wide receivers because Detroit uh, had ranked near the bottom when it came to mm -hmm. defense against uh, receivers uh, in the NFL and. Detroit just did everything right. They just shut down Dallas uh, offense total, like period. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was a down week for Ferguson, which surprised me. A guy that I mention every single week now on our podcast, uh, Stefan Diggs has been great, and he uh, he scored uh, multiple touchdowns uh, this week and last week. He scored touchdowns, and uh, he's been playing really well, especially with um, – Nico, Nico Collins. Collins going down. Diggs has really stepped up and has become a leader on that team. So he scored over 19 points. Uh, Hubbard's been consistent. Uh, yeah, the only points I left on my bench was Bucky Irving, who uh, in hindsight, I wish I would have played him in place of Bigsby. Um, the, the Buccaneers running backs in the absence of uh, Rashad White, who uh, is injured, those two young guys blew up this past Sunday. And <laughs> I don't know what White's going to do if, if and when he comes back off injury because those two young bucks uh, had a really fantastic weekend. Yeah. So, yeah, almost everything went right for me on my side of the ball. On the other side of the ball, um, all right, let's, let's talk about this. We, <laughs> we have to talk about the elephant in the room here. Um, Malik played – Several players who had been ruled out or injured. Mm -hmm. uh, his kicker was on a bye. He he made one switch by benching Collins. Mm -hmm. um, but let's talk about this. And I've been playing fantasy football for almost 20 years, I think. Mm -hmm. And never, never have I ever seen a team forfeit the week. <laughs> um, you do what you need to do to fill those gaps. Now let's, let's talk about Butker as kicker. If he would have dropped Butker and just picked in, uh, picked up a bye week fill in, nobody was going to pounce on Butker. He wasn't going to lose Butker. He could have dropped him and picked him up next week. Um, but to just get a big goose egg, cause he didn't want to drop his kicker. It doesn't make any sense to me. And you know, he got, a negative point one from ETN, even though I don't know if that's necessarily his fault because ETN just had a, a bad game. And yeah, they, he had a he came up with a hamstring injury yeah. early on in the game, which basically sat him down. He might miss this week actually because of it. Um, they're talking about so that was a normal play. Rashad White was ruled out yeah. of this game. He was, I can't remember if he was trending in the right direction or the wrong direction during the week. Yeah, um, but he ended up being ruled out. And then Taysom Hill also was on the injury list. Yeah. He ended up being ruled out. And then um, if you look at Malik's bench, he's got Nico Collins, who's on the IR, Tyreek Hill, who's on a bye, Puka Nakua, who's on the IR, <laughs> Kyler Murray, which he already had a quarterback, so he didn't need to replace. Raheem Mostert is on uh, a bye week, and he did have Baltimore's defense. So my thing is I, I reached out to Malik and asked him to set his lineup or make some changes. And he did, um, like I said, he, he moved Nico Collins out. And then um, I understand like this is one of those weird dilemmas of like, it's not really that he didn't want to drop Harrison Butker. It's just, I think it was more so the rest of his team being out that at that point he was just kind of like annoyed that he didn't have anybody to play. And if you look at the bench, like, Sure, you could drop Baltimore's defense for a player, and you could get um, 
some sort of wide receiver or running back to fill in for maybe White or Taysom Hill, and then you could replace your kicker. But then you're still missing one position. Well, you brought up a good point, though. He has an empty IR spot. Yeah, that was so, that was the one thing I was trying to get him to do. Nakua and Collins are taking up bench spots when either one of them should have been on the IR. That frees up a bench spot for you to pick up a bye week or injury fill-in. Yeah. Um, so it, he didn't have to do that. He didn't have to concede the game. And I don't know what his work life looks like. I mean, I know people can't obsess over lineups like you and I do, um, but he could have made an effort to fill in some of those gaps. And, you know, I've, I've lost to people who've gotten zero in a slot. <laughs> yeah. He could have made an effort, but, right. um, you know, at the beginning of the day, he, I was told that, you know, oh, he's forfeiting and, <laughs> that, you know, I don't mind. Well, here, see, here's the problem I have with that. I remember one time uh, years ago in a league that I was in, a family member wanted to take part for the first time. And then he barely made an effort. And, uh, one week he uh, had like four empty roster spots. And, and what that does is throw off the playoff scenario. It gives mm -hmm. somebody an easy win that might not have otherwise gotten the win. You know, what if I make the playoffs, you know, by one one game over somebody else and you point to this game as the one that caused that. So, you know, I urge everybody playing fantasy football, just you made a commitment to the league. You got a lot of people that uh, are all taking it seriously. And sometimes a lot of money is on the line and, and you gotta, you gotta try, yeah. you gotta fill in those <laughs> rosters. So, yeah, I, I get the frustration and, uh, that's also why Malik doesn't play <laughs> in money leagues. Um, <laughs> it's just because his commitment isn't that much, um, or as high as other people, but he, he did come back to this league. He was excited to actually be back in it because he enjoys the, the bragging rights of Owen TV. I think it was just one of those, like frustrating weeks where, you know, all your guys are on by, all your best players are either on by or injured. And I think he was just kind of <laughs> just one of those frustrated, frustrated weekends, which I, I can kind of understand. But he, he did get some decent performances. Lamar yeah, Jackson, from his, uh, the guys that he did have. Yeah. McLaurin uh, is, is uh, experiencing a resurgence. He's been great uh, mm -hmm. on, on that Washington offense uh jmo looked good uh in that lions game mm -hmm. kittle has been on fire he came back from injury and he had multiple touchdowns in this past weekend yeah uh he had some guys who put up some decent numbers you just can't help but wonder if if uh if he would have replaced some of those guys who got him zero he might have been competitive right uh we'll we'll take a look at the waiver wire too if there was anybody that could have really changed it Obviously, I don't think he was he was picking up Sean Tucker or anybody like that. But if there was some decent names, um, we'll see. But like I said, I think, and I guess this is a this is also a hindsight kind of deal. But at least in this notion, like you put up the most points in the league, I don't really think there was a combination of free agents out there that would have given him the win. Yeah. So again, that's a, a hindsight thing, but at least like it didn't come down to the wire because of it. I just want to remind our viewers and listeners that we are an eight team league. So yeah. there's usually a lot of talent on the waiver wire. As a matter of fact, I don't know if you noticed this, but this past weekend I flat out dropped JK Dobbins. Yeah. Um, because I, I had a ton of wealth at the running back position. So mm -hmm. there's JK Dobbins sitting on the waiver wire. So there's, there's a lot of talent on the waiver wire in yeah. this league. Um, all right, to the next matchup. That would be, oh, Becky and beating Sammy. Sammy uh, falls to 0-6. Wow. Um, I hate to say that it's panic time, but it's it's almost past panic time, to be honest, um, because after Becky at 2-4, and four, the next closest person, I believe there's some 3-3s. and threes, Yeah. Um, but there's more people towards the top now and um it's not looking good for Sammy. He almost has to win out um or for someone to go on a big losing streak or something like that because I feel like Becky's team is kind of on the upswing lately. Um so it, it's do or die time for Sammy and I, I don't know exactly what he can do because his team actually played pretty good this week. He had a couple injury issues which uh was unfortunate for him. But um 
If we look at Becky's team, she played Jalen Hurts this week, who put up 21.86 points. Yeah, he started out slow in that game, and then uh, he, he really started hitting his stride and yeah. got his uh, weapons back, and uh, Philly all of a sudden looks scary again. Yeah, and they played a tough matchup against Cleveland, so I expect them to get better moving forward. Uh, she Unfortunately, but also fortunately, because uh, Sammy had the same issue, Marvin Harrison went out early with a concussion. He did not accrue any points, so she got a zero. Um, but Deontay Johnson got back to his regular play. Uh, he had a down week. I believe it was just last week, um, but he played a lot better. He got a touchdown, scoring almost 20 points. James Conner had a difficult week as the Cardinals are just kind of struggling right now. And David Montgomery for Becky continues to do what David Montgomery has been doing. He has scored in every single game this year. You know, if, I don't know why this occurs to me after the fact, but for those of you who do like parlays and touchdown parlays, I was kind of kicking myself for not having Montgomery in my touchdown parlay. That guy scores a touchdown every single week. Yeah. He's about as reliable as you can get for a touchdown. If you're going to do a multi lake touchdown parlay, you have to put Montgomery in your lineup until he proves you wrong. He has been incredible. Yeah. he. It's basically him, McCaffrey, and Derrick Henry that are almost always going to be minus odds to score a touchdown. Yeah. Because it's just so much of a given. Yeah. Kyron Williams, too, you got to add to that. That's he's, true. He's he's had consecutive touchdowns or consecutive games with touchdowns going back to last season. Yeah. Um, Trey McBride had a good game, 17 points off of 96 yards and eight catches, probably a lot due to Marvin Harrison being concussed. Possibly Marvin Harrison might be out this week as well, so mm. McBride might have another big game coming up for him. Drake London continues a hot streak that he's had, got in the end zone again, 74 yards and six catches, 19 points. Uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba, he's kind of been right around that. Nothing special, but he's getting you consistent numbers. And then Brandon Aubrey, the only person to score for uh, Dallas against Detroit. And he just made his field goals like normal, scoring 12 points. And then I think the move of the week, honestly, <laughs> Becky picking up the Detroit defense. Now, we told her to drop or not drop the Dallas defense, but to not start the Dallas defense because we figured this would be a shootout. I did not expect her to go out and grab the Detroit defense <laughs> because I think we all assumed it would have been more of a shootout. Yeah. Um, but she told me she really wanted to just root for the Lions, so she went for the Detroit defense, and man, did it pay off. They gave her 18 points. I believe that's the number one defense on the week. Yeah. Um, they had Despite, three interceptions. I mean, unfortunately, they lost Hutchinson in that game. We'll yeah. see how it affects the team going forward. But, you know, it's those types of things, when one of your star players gets injured like that, is is one of those things that can motivate this team mm -hmm. uh, and rally uh, behind him because he's, he's done for the season. He's looking at a, maybe a six-month recuperation yeah. from the, a broken tibia, I read. Yeah, it's going to be um, tough. But, yeah, sure. and so, you know, it's funny. Um, uh, Sammy had an early lead er, earlier in the day yeah. to the point where he was bragging that he was old, staring at the first win of the season. Breaking one of the old fantasy cardinal sins yep. of uh, just <laughs> getting ahead of things. Yeah. Yeah, I find that when you brag that you have things in hand, uh, yeah. the fantasy gods, uh, nothing will make them laugh harder when you say, oh, I got this wrapped up. And yeah. she she came from behind, took the lead, and uh, despite getting zero for Marvin Harrison, uh, she still won uh, by 26 points. Yeah. Sammy got another uh, consistent outing out of C.J. Stroud, three touchdowns, 18 points. Tank Dell was a part of that because also Nico Collins being out, he also thrived, got a touchdown for 18 points. A.J. Brown coming back was a big deal. He looked really good right away, 23 points for him. Josh Jacobs, he's been kind of pedestrian lately. Uh, we talked about George Mason, Jordan Mason going out early in that San Francisco game. He looked like he was on pace for a really good game, so that's yeah. disappointing for Sammy. Uh, Dalton Kincaid had an okay game last night. Didn't get in the end zone, but he got 11 points, which isn't bad for the tight end. James Cook, that's the zero that Sammy got. That was another one of those situations where it was a very late game time decision. Mm. All week they were talking about he should be good to go, things like that. And then, you know, just before game time, they ruled him out. And Ray Davis had a pretty good game for uh, Buffalo. 
So kind of unfortunate for Sammy. I I don't think Ray Davis, he didn't have 26 points, I don't believe. So I don't think like if Sammy would have swapped out James Cook for Ray Davis late in the afternoon that it would have mattered, luckily. But it's still an unfortunate situation. Uh, Rico Dottle against Detroit. I would question that decision just because Detroit's been so good against running backs. Um, we'll look at his bench in a minute here. Houston's defense actually put up some points, had a 12-point game. Um, Sammy decided to sit Wandale, which I guess, you know, he scored just as many as Rico Dottle, so not really a wrong call there. So Sammy didn't really miss anything on his bench. Jonathan Taylor being hurt, probably another big deal um, that he's still out. He might be out for another two weeks possibly, so that could be tough for Sammy. I am looking at Jordan Love on his bench, scored 25 points. Not that that would have made a huge difference, but he did outscore Stroud. So, yeah. you know, Love has been on fire. He really has been on fire. So I don't know if you try to work him into your starting lineup. It's funny because <laughs> Becky was the one that dropped Jordan Love <laughs> and Sammy picked him up but and didn't, didn't play him. didn't start him. Yeah. yeah. Um, the only thing I would say that concerns me about Jordan Love and – He's going against it right now anyway, so I can't really... It, it's similar to like my Debo issue. Typically, Debo is like a high volatility guy. He'll get in the end zone, have big plays, or it seems like he gives you nothing. Um, and I, I don't like to count on that. <coughs> Jordan Love, he only had 258 passing yards, but he got all the touchdowns through the air. Like Josh Jacobs never stole a touchdown. You know, they didn't have anything weird like that. No running back scores. Like he got every single passing touchdown. So he got four passing touchdowns for only 258 yards. That efficiency is so hard to match game in and game out. But he has done it a few games now. So I can't really dog him too much for it. But as me, as a fantasy owner, that would make me nervous to play him. So I, I understand it, I guess. Um. So, yeah, Becky got the big win in this matchup. She really needed it, like we said. Yeah. Um. She also got help from you winning your matchup because now it creates a tighter middle pack that she can catch up to and get back in the playoff race. Um, so everything kind of uh, working out for Becky at the moment. Yeah. Um, next up, we have Marie taking on Tracy. And Marie's team still continues to be one of the hottest teams in the league. I think she's she scored like over 140 in like three straight weeks or something like that. Yeah, the uh, me, Tracy, and Marie are I I believe occupy the top three slots on uh, yeah the point standing. So all three of our teams have been putting up points week after week. Yeah, and Marie got the uh, benefit of not having to choose between Patrick Mahomes and Jared Goff this week. Patrick Mahomes being on a bye, she just slotted in Jared Goff, and of course, Jared Goff just continues to have a great season after you know. Maybe a rocky little start, but these last two games, he's been incredible. How come that never happens to me? Like, when <laughs> I have two quarterbacks and one of them is on a bye and I'm forced to start the the other quarterback, they always give me a dud game. <laughs> She's forced to start golf, yeah. and he has a monster game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which it, it almost makes it tricky next week. Now, I know she has Travis Kelsey, Ooh. so she'll probably still go back to Patrick Mahomes, but the way Jared Goff is playing right now, it's it's hard to sit him. Um, CD lamb, you know, he torched the lions last year. Um, didn't do nearly as good this year. Didn't even break a hundred yards. I don't think he's broke a hundred yards on the season actually. Yeah. Um, no, he got 98 in week four. That's his high. Um, yeah. so he's kind of had a down season. I mean, it's, it's still a good season, but as far as CD lamb standards, it's been down. Uh, DK Metcalf. Oh my goodness. I have him in another league. Mm. That was a frustrating day. He had three catches on 11 targets. He had a touchdown called back. He had a toe that was out of the end zone on another catch. And him and Geno Smith just seemed off. They're, uh, uh, Seattle's on a three-game skid, if I'm yeah. uh, correct. Uh, mm -hmm. Something's not right there. they got to pull it together. Yeah, they're struggling all of a sudden. A person that's not struggling right now, though, is Derrick Henry. My he has been incredible man. these last few weeks, and that's partially why Marie has been winning these games. He had 132 yards with two touchdowns. For 25 points, again, he's just he's getting in the end zone almost every game. DeAndre Swift has had a crazy resurgence kind of out of nowhere with yeah. the Bears getting better. Um, he had 22 points, 91 rushing yards, a rushing touchdown. 
And he's been getting a lot of catches and for big yards, so that's been helping him out a lot. He's had like three good games in a row, right? Like he's he's yeah. been getting double digit yep. points every week now. Yeah. Um everybody getting blindsided by Tucker Kraft after having a really good week last week. Yeah. A lot of people picked him up and played him this week and just giving you three and a half points. But uh she needed somebody to replace Kelsey. If you remember, I was going to take Tucker Kraft, but she took him away from me. <laughs> took the bullet. So I guess that's okay, but we'll get to my tight end later. He didn't do too much better. Um, Amari Cooper, again, wait a minute. Did you just, oh my gosh, I didn't see this. This is breaking news live. Amari Cooper, as I refreshed this, he's a Buffalo Bill. He got traded to the so Bills. if you look at Amari Cooper on our scoreboard oh, right it now, says it says Buffalo. I'm going to read this note. I didn't even see this before we... So, Amari Cooper and a 2025 sixth-round pick from the Browns. Wow. Is that the Browns' way of conceding this season? Like, Cooper is really the only real talent they have. Well, Nick Um, Chubb's coming back, but... Yeah, that's true. But we don't know how he's going to look, right? Yeah, but Cooper, he's going to benefit from this, man. That's going to be an uptick. Uh, in his performance and man uh, I tried to trade for Amari Cooper a couple weeks ago in our big league and I got denied yeah you know what hoping for that kind of thing to happen correct me if I'm wrong I want to say I drafted Cooper and then dropped him after week two because the Browns look so bad and then of course the week you dropped dropped him him. ESPN was it ESPN because I picked him up I have him in ESPN (laughs) and he he blew up like the week after I dropped him and had I known he was going to become a bill I never would have flat out dropped him because yeah uh that's uh that's a match made in heaven it's going to be interesting that's, watching him. that's also a direct response well we were going to get to it during my team but Devonte adams got dealt to the jets today so that's a direct yeah. you know response of the jets went out and got Devonte adams and then the bills are like whoa, whoa, whoa we're still at top of the afc east we're gonna go get amari cooper interesting so that'll be fun Wonder what see. other moves are going to take place before the deadline. Yeah, I don't know. It's a couple weeks away, so we still got plenty of time. But uh, that should be a big one. That might really boost Marie's team even more, which is terrifying, actually. Mm. Um, Michael Pittman Jr. got 12 points. He got in the end zone again, once again, because Joe Flacco started. Um, I don't know when we're going to see Anthony Richardson at this point. It seemed like he was on track to play this week, but he didn't. So yeah, that was kind of a surprising announcement. Like prior to kickoff, they're like, oh, he's he's back and healthy. So I thought he was going to get the start. And then just before kickoff, the Colts announced that Flacco was a starting quarterback. I'm yeah. Like, they they s- maybe realize something's not well, right there. They said that Anthony Richardson was going to be their emergency quarterback for mm. that game. Okay. So it sounds like he is on the right track, but they're still maybe, you know, Flacco's been playing well enough. I think they're trying to just see if they can mm. eke out a couple more wins before they bring Anthony Richardson back. Um, so, yeah, it's an interesting one. Young Way Koo continues to be a great kicker for fantasy leagues this year. He yeah. got another 12 points. Um, Marie having Pittsburgh's defense against the lousy Vegas Raiders um, gave her 13 points. So that was another big boost for her. And then on uh, Tracy's side, Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase didn't put up the 70 points they had last week. Yeah, Jamar Chase didn't get in the end zone. That was a frustrating game. Man. Yeah, I, I thought there was going to be a ton of offense in that game. It turned out to be more of a defensive battle, and it was hard to watch. I turned it off at some point. Yeah, and think if if Joe Burrow didn't have that 55-yard rushing touchdown, yeah. he would have had eight points. Yeah. Yeah, because that's eleven. that was an 11-point swing. He would have had an eight-point game, which would have been crazy. Yeah. Um, so down week for them. Chris Olave. Another injury. Another concussion really early in the game. And when he And when he got concussed, he lost a fumble. So that got minus points. <laughs> oh. So Tracy got negative 0.5 points from him. Um, Alvin Kamara did his normal thing. He got in the end zone, had some catches, um, four yards rushing on the ground. And then Javante Williams, he look, he's one of those players that he had been okay for most of the season. And then the time that you have to play him in bye week scenarios, he had three catches for 23 rushing yards and he lost a fumble. So that was frustrating. Sam Laporta could have had a really bad game if he didn't get one catch for 52 yards and a touchdown. <laughs> I almost wept when, because uh, that was the, was that a flea flicker? 
that was the it was the reverse it it was the reverse flea flicker yeah 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 and so when when they did that you know flea flicker another one of the the tricks in their bag and i'm getting a kick out of it and then i see golf launch that ball downfield and it went right into the hands of laporta I got emotional, like, you know, because he's been hurt. And yeah, he's been struggling. Now he's back, and here he was with this long touchdown, and that was just so much fun to see. Yeah. So he could have had a really dud week if he didn't get in the end zone. Zay Flowers, back-to-back oh. huge games. Yeah. All of that, nine catches, 132 yards, all in the first half. Wow. Um, they didn't have to use him in the second half because they had a good lead. Um, Joe Mixon immediately came back and had 102 rushing yards, a touchdown and a receiving touchdown, which was crazy. Um, Fairbairn had another solid game and the Jets defense did not show up last night. They had two sacks for two points. They've been fairly solid this season, but I'd always be nervous about starting a a defense against Buffalo. You never know what they're going to do. Yeah. Um, so realistically, uh, Tracy maybe left a little bit of points on the bench. She could have played Chase Brown over Javante Williams. That could be a logical play. So that's an 11 point swing there. That gets her to 140 points. Is that correct? 140. Um, and then she was saying that she was going to play Jake Bates over Fairbairn. That would have been a very risky play that. I guess would have worked out, worked out. Yeah, Fairbairn's been really, really hot. Um, and the Lions, the Lions just don't kick field goals. Like yeah. Jake Bates, he had one game where he scored ten points, and that was like his best game. So for them to kick four field goals was kind of of a surprise. So I guess you know if if that's what Tracy was going to do, that that would have been the difference. But yeah. um, it's tough, and um, ended up getting the loss. And then finally, the final matchup. I lost on Monday night football. <laughs> Yay. Ah. Um, I just needed Tyler Bass to outscore Garrett Wilson by like <laughs> seven or something. Because I was I, I think I was up by seven, something like that. And I was projected to win. And then uh, Tyler Bass goes and misses a field goal, Mul- an extra any, point. Multiple, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was an ugly game. The Jets missed multiple field goals as well. It was windy out there, wasn't it? So Yeah. You know, that kind of goes back. You and I were talking about picking up kickers uh, that play in domes versus playing outside. That is a big, big factor for me, especially if I'm streaming kickers, is I want a kicker in a dome. I don't trust kickers outdoors. Yeah. And, you know, it's not quite winter yet. But right. Look what happened last night. The wind was swirling. I remember one of the kicks, the ball did like a corkscrew. Yeah. And then doinked off the upright. So m- one of my rules of fantasy football is stay away from outdoor kickers if possible. Yeah, especially it, it seems like when you're you're towards the East Coast, it seems like those those winds are way worse during the colder months. Um, so I finally decided to bench Josh uh, Allen for Jaden Daniels because Jaden Daniels has just been a little bit more consistent, and Josh Allen puts up. <laughs> a few more points than Jaden Daniels, which is unfortunate. Could have been the difference um, if Tyler Bass made those field goals. So there's a lot of ifs there, but it was really frustrating. If that, I think it would have almost been more frustrating if Tyler Bass made the field goals, and I realized that sitting Josh Allen lost me the matchup. Oh, that would have been brutal. Um, because if you look at my bench, like there wasn't much I was going to do. I told myself I wasn't going to start Brian Thomas Jr. against Chicago. I was right. I did it in my big league, and that was a big mistake. Um, Malik neighbors being out again this week, uh, Aaron Jones on by Devonte Adams, um, was still hurt. Um, quote unquote hurt now that he's traded, he might play this week and Cooper cup still being on by, he might be back for this week. So I got a lot of lineup decisions to make. Mm. Um, but I had a pretty solid outing from all my guys. Devonte Smith came back, had a good game, got a touchdown. Darius Slayton. He was frustrating. Cause I think he could have had a huge game. They had a, what was it like a 50 yard touchdown that was called back yeah um on a penalty and him and daniel jones just couldn't connect i think he had 11 targets in that game yeah jones just looked off during that game i don't know what threw him off but mm-hmm. yes uh slayton uh was hurt by that performance but we got to look at Bijan robinson uh yeah uh, correct me if i'm wrong but this was his biggest game of the oh, season yeah. 
uh, twenty over twenty five points. Uh, he was fun to watch. Finally found um, the end zone a couple times. Yeah, that was uh, that was great to see. Yep, the uh, kind of disappointment. Jameer Gibbs, um, David Montgomery just has been so much better. Yeah, um, and it's a good discussion that me and my brother even had during the game. Is like David Montgomery might just be a better running back than Jameer Gibbs. Jameer Gibbs probably has the more athletic talent and maybe the, you know, the, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. Just the flashiness, I guess. Yeah. But as like a pure running back, David Montgomery just might be better. Well, what I'm seeing is, you know, be- between the twenties, uh, Gibbs is the guy, but Montgomery is going to get you into the end zone. So yeah. you put him in, in the red zone and he scores. So that's, yeah. That's how they complement each other, but when you're playing fantasy football, you want the guy that's getting the touchdowns. Yeah, so Gibbs has been a little disappointing for his draft value, but again, it's still fun to have a line. Um, The other frustrating thing of this matchup, I dropped Mark Andrews this week for Dalton Schultz. (laughs) What did Mark Andrews do? He scored a touchdown. touchdown. Um, I think he had 15 points, which is his best game by far. I picked up Dalton Schultz thinking he would have a good game after Nico Collins got out. He had eight targets, but he only had four catches for 27 yards, so he could have had a bigger game. But if I would have just kept Andrews like I did in my other leagues, I would have won this matchup. Uh. So a lot of little frustrating things happened. Um, T. Higgins, still solid. Tony Pollard had a great game in a layup matchup against the Colts. They're just bad against running backs. And then Denver's defense did not do anywhere near what I thought they would with Mm -hmm. the Chargers. They'd been really good for a while, but couldn't get anything going. Uh, for Ian, Joe Flacco started again. He was okay. Amon Ross St. Brown was okay. He got in the end zone, which saved his day, hurt my day. Um, DJ Moore was pedestrian. Ken Walker, that was frustrating starting on Thursday mm. because he got eight catches. He was having a terrible game. Yeah. And he had a, like, I think they got down to the one yard line and he ran it in, which was his touchdown. And then he had eight catches for 37 yards. And it was like all in the fourth quarter, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, so those were like... Dumping him, dumping him, I think I told you, I think he had like five catches on the last uh, drive <laughs> of the game, which was so frustrating. And uh, the sad thing is, five points plus whatever yardage that is could have also been the difference in this matchup. So there's a lot of dumb things like that. Saquon Barkley had a bad game. Coming off the, the bye, right? And yeah. And he had a down game. Now... I know Cleveland's defense has been pretty good, but that's a pretty shocking performance from yeah. Barkley, and and Ian's lucky to have overcome that. Yeah. Um, Brock Bowers continues to be really good. Uh, Jaden Reed, he has been similar to Jordan Love, where his numbers aren't always great, but he finds the end zone so many times, mm-hmm. and he's so efficient with it. You just have to play him every week. So he got in the end zone again for about 15 points, and then Garrett Wilson, like I said, ruined my Monday night. Mm. Had 107 yards, eight catches, and a touchdown. Really curious. That might be his last big game now that Devontae Adams is coming in. I think it's going to be really awkward sometimes for these guys as fantasy value to see who's going to be on top between Devontae Adams and Garrett Wilson. Well, we'll see. You know, it depends on who draws uh, the you know the the better defender. You know, I mean, if Devontae Adams draws the defender, you know, uh, Wilson will continue to have big games if. If he draws the defender, then Adams is going to have the big games. But both of these guys are going to be dependent on Rodgers, who's, for the most part, looked awful. He had that stupid Hail Mary, <laughs> which padded his numbers uh, last yeah. night. It, it it gave me flashbacks uh, to the Detroit Lions game when he mm-hmm. put up that Hail Mary. Um, but they're both dependent on Rodgers, who is not playing well. Uh, and, you know, when you told me that uh, Adams was going over there, I was so shocked. Because Adams seemed like, you know, he wanted to get out of a bad situation. Now he's going to a team that just fired their head coach. Their quarterback isn't playing well. I'm really surprised that he agreed to that trade. Um, but it's because he's best friends. Well. It's because he's best friends with Aaron Rodgers. I, I guess. That's why. That's but, why I'm yeah. thinking Garrett Wilson might get the short end of the stick just because Devontae Adams and Aaron Rodgers are boys. Similar to why Aaron Rodgers trusts Alan Lazard a lot. He goes to Alan Lazard in the end zone because they played together previously. So, I don't know. It it might be a little bit awkward. Justin Tucker continues to do his thing. Green Bay also continuing to do their thing on defense. They've been a pretty consistent 
uh, fantasy defense this year. Um, like I said, not much left on the uh, benches. I guess Evan Ingram for the tight end um, was pretty good, but mm. I mean, Ian has Brock Bauer, so he has a, a tight end dilemma, which is weird. Yeah. Because I think Evan Ingram is going to be that good going forward. He was kind of Trevor Lawrence's safety pin last year. I think he will this year as well. Um, and oh, my only cool. guy that I could have played is Josh Allen, like I said, and Maybe. probably wouldn't make a, a big difference. Well, that's back to back wins for Ian. He's uh he's right up there in the standings now and uh making yeah. some noise. We can look at the standings real quick while we mention it. Like you said, you're five and one at the top. Also, you are oh, you are point two behind Tracy <laughs> in points total. She yeah. does have a technical lead there. Um and then Ian's team is now in second at four and two. Marie's four and two, but she has a lot less points. Um, I'm down to fifth now, and I believe I'm fourth in points. Um, Malik in his rightful sixth place showboating team spot. Um, Becky right there at two and four. So if if Malik or I lose this week and Becky gets a win, then uh, that will shift things. And then Sammy, zero oh and six. So, yeah. Uh, <sighs> let's look at the waiver wire this week. We got. Tons of quarterbacks, like always. Baker Mayfield, I feel like if, if you have anybody on by and you need a quarterback or your quarterback just is struggling, Baker Mayfield has just been super solid this year. He's going up against a Baltimore defense on Monday night who they just they haven't been able to stop passing. And uh, I think that's probably the best option. Geno Smith, I wouldn't trust because I picked him up in another league and he just he keeps getting one touchdown games. He can't get multiple touchdowns. He looked really off last week. Um, he's just been kind of spotty. Um, I hate to say you could think about picking up Aaron Rodgers now that he has even more weapons. Um, but like you said, he hasn't been that great. But I do think it as a speculation ad, he could be really good. Um, Matthew Stafford, also in the same scenario, might be getting Cooper Cup back. Maybe Puka Nakua in the next week or so. So speculation ad if you would like to. Um, those might be some options. Yeah. You know, the thing with Stafford is even though he puts up decent numbers, his turnovers yeah. are always there. And that's always a big, uh, question mark. You could say yeah. the same thing about Rogers that mm -hmm. he could have a pretty solid game, but then have, you know, two interceptions and a fumble. So, yeah. um, yeah, there's a lot of talent on the waiver wire. Like I said, because we're an eight team league, but you know, I'm, I'm pretty set at quarterback. Yeah. So I'm not really looking at quarterbacks, um, but you know, whenever, uh, whenever I watch, uh, you know, the red zone, I, I hear Bo Nix's name called out quite a bit. <laughs> uh, he's, uh, he's running around and he's yeah. scoring points. So yeah, he's been, he's been getting there and, uh, Drake may another rookie started for the Patriots. I know it stinks to be tied to the Patriots, but he looked pretty good. He had three touchdowns, I believe. Yeah. Um, he rushes a little bit too. So another option again, like you said, eight team league, not too often do we need quarterbacks, yeah. but there are some options in case of injury or something like that. May is also facing the worst rank defense yeah. against quarterbacks. Yeah, so. Jacksonville. So anybody can do anything against Jacksonville. So that's, that's a, good, <laughs> a good try. Um, big waiver wire option, Jacoby Myers. Now the number one option for the Vegas Raiders sitting out there at wide receiver. If you mm. feel like you need any wide receivers help, Sammy. <clears throat> <laughs> um, that is an option for you. Like you said, you dropped JK Dobbins. He's out there. I don't need any running back help, but if you do, he would be a good option. He's been getting in the end zone pretty consistently and he's playing Arizona this week. So that should be a pretty good matchup for him. Um, Ramondre Stevenson, if he gets healthy in time again, he's playing Jacksonville. They can't defend anybody. I would pick him up if you need a fill in. Um, Darnell Mooney, he's been really consistent for Atlanta. He did have a little bit of a down week this past week, um, but Atlanta's been throwing the ball a lot. They're playing Seattle this week, so that could be a potential shootout. Um, so that's a good option for you. Um, let's see. Rashid Shahid, I would stay away from. He looks like he has a knee injury, mm. and there's potential he might not play because it is a Thursday night game. So that's a little bit spooky. He had a surprising uh, kickoff or, or kick return yeah. on mm -hmm. Sunday. He would have had a really down game yeah. if it wasn't for that. Yeah. Um, Romeo Dobbs came back from his one-game suspension, scored two touchdowns. 
Uh, again, I'm nervous because Green Bay just spreads the ball around. I, I get nervous picking up those kind of players, but that is an option. They're playing Houston, another potential shootout game. Uh, Demario Douglas plays for New England. I know it's sad, but again, playing the Jacksonville Jaguars. Terrible defense. Um, so if you want to do something like that, um, Demario Douglas is also up there. Um, or Juju Smith-Schuster. That was another one before the bye week. Kansas City, he had a big game for Kansas City. He could be their number one number one wide receiver now that Rasheed Rice is done. So plenty of options as always. Um, Joe, is there anybody that I missed that you can think of? Uh, did you mention Mooney? I know he's he's yeah. going up against Seattle, but uh, Seattle's defense just hasn't looked right lately. They've been giving up a lot of points. I really like Mooney, and mm -hmm. if I had room on my roster, I might pick him up. I do have him in another league. Yeah. Uh, and even though uh Atlanta relied more on the run this past weekend than the pass mm -hmm. when when Cousins does put it together and uh finds his groove Mooney is a big recipient of that so it's again you know being an eight team league it's really uh surprising to see some of the talent sitting on the waiver wire yeah and then because of the terrible position tight end David Njoku now that Amari Cooper is gone he might be the number one guy for Cleveland now I know Cleveland is just not that good of an offense but if you're getting a tight end that's getting, you know, near eight to 10 targets a game, that might be enough to be one of the better tight ends in the league. Um, Mark Andrews, like I said, he's been on an upswing lately. I did just drop him. Maybe I'll try to pick him back up. <laughs> Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe it's just bad juju. Um, TJ Hawkinson is getting closer to being able to play. Um, it might be a week or two more, but that might be a good option to save your season. Zach Ertz has been pretty good for Washington. He's kind of been Jaden Daniels' check down guy. Um, so if you need a tight end, there are some options. Another speculative one, Hunter Henry, now that New England has Drake May, who shows that he can have he has more ability to throw the ball down the field than Jacoby Brissett. Hunter Henry, if you think New England's offense is going to get better because of Drake May, could be a good option. Uh Goddard's hurt too. So if Goddard's in your roster on your yeah. roster, then you gotta look at someone to replace his loss, uh, mm -hmm. he is, he's not on IR yet, is he? No, they just think he's going to be out for multiple weeks. I yeah. think, what is his backup? Grant Calcaterra, I believe his name is. Yeah. Um, so that's an option. Um, another kind of sneaky one, Jatavion Sanders from Carolina. He's a rookie tight end. He got quite a few looks last week, um, and this week he's going up against the Commanders. So that could be a shootout game of just, you know, tons of catches and things like that. So plenty of actual tight end options this week, I think. And then uh, I think we've kind of been looking at uh, streaming defenses the last few weeks, and the number one out there is Cincinnati. And Cincinnati's off defense is not good, but they're playing the Cleveland Browns. And yeah. the Cleveland Browns now just got rid of Amari Cooper. Deshaun Watson is terrible. And uh, Cincinnati, they, they can get to the ball, so they can get a, a, a few sacks. Deshaun Watson takes a lot of sacks, so there could be some easy points there. I saw a quote today where someone – ask the coaching staff with Cleveland, you know, are you thinking of a, a quarterback change? And they said, Watson gives us our best chance to win games. Yeah. And that has not been the case. <laughs> I, it, that sounds almost delusional to me. Yeah. Uh, if you're going to stream defenses, pick up defenses that are playing Cleveland because yeah. they are awful right now. Yep. New Orleans playing Denver on Thursday night. Denver, they've been just a slow offense, slow-paced offense, so they don't score a lot. Um, they do turn the ball over a little bit, so that might be a good defense. I wouldn't pick up Jacksonville's defense. I don't know why. I get they're projected high because they're playing New England, but I, I don't trust them. Uh, the Rams defense, they're also a terrible defense. Even though they're playing the Raiders, I just don't believe in it. Philadelphia against the Giants, maybe, but I think that game is actually going to be kind of close. Um, Indianapolis against Miami, maybe because Indianapolis playing, um, whoever is going to start for Miami. It still might be Tyler Huntley. Um, but there has been some talk about somebody else. Perhaps I got to say one of my strategies in streaming defenses is to look to see who's playing Miami. And I've been fairly successful with that strategy. Yeah. Uh, I feel bad for Miami. There's a lot of talent on that team, but, yeah. uh, they're struggling to even get into the end zone. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking to stream defenses, Indy is someone you might want to pick up. Yeah, so I would say Cincinnati, New Orleans, and Indianapolis, probably your best options. 
Uh, maybe as kind of a secondary option, you could think of Washington or maybe the Chargers defense. Those two playing in not as good of offenses, but they are not as consistent, I would mm-hmm. say. So some options there. Um, all right, let's look to uh, to next week's matchups. Like I said, week seven, only two teams on by, but a couple of significant players in each one. Oh, boy. Oh, I look did, at this. I did not see this. <laughs> Joe and I playing in the matchup this week. I'm projected to win at the moment. Your favorite? Um, I'm going to write a strongly worded letter. To, 134 uh, to 129. I will say my lineup is not set for certain yet. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm debating whether or not to pick up a new defense. Um, Denver also has a pretty good defensive matchup because New Orleans is starting Spencer Rattler still. He looked pretty solid um, in his first outing, but he is a still still a rookie and uh, could make some mistakes. So I got to debate that. Tyler Bass is being dropped. I can't stand it when kickers just <laughs> start <laughs> missing. <laughs> it seems like it comes in in droves when that happens. So I'll kick. I'll pick up a new kicker, kick him to the curb. Um, the only thing I have to figure out is my lineup after that because Devontae Adams might be good to go and they are playing a tough Pittsburgh defense but I feel like Rodgers really wants to get him going so there will be a decision made there Cooper Cup if he's healthy he's hard to sit so I gotta I have a lot of tough decisions I'm hoping Malik Neighbors is back for this game Tony Pollard he's been really good Buffalo's been really bad against the run so like he's a good option but I don't want to like he would be my next option to maybe sit, maybe T Higgins because of Cleveland, but again, mm. Cleveland's just a mess right now. So I don't know. I got a lot of lineup decisions. I feel like no matter which way I spin it, I'm probably going to make the wrong decision, and that's just how I feel about my team right now. Um, do you have any last minute lineup changes that you're looking at, or do you think? No, I think mine's set? locked in. I put Kyron Williams back into the starting lineup. I'm excited to get him back. Uh, I don't think I'll be streaming a defense this week because I really like San Francisco. They've been playing pretty well, <clears throat> even though they are going to be playing uh, Kansas City. Um, you know, Mahomes hasn't been his usual self, so right. I might uh, there might be some turnovers there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I think my lineup is locked in you know the just for a brief moment i thought about uh starting the the hookup of uh addison and darnold but they're playing the lions yeah and i don't think i want to start those guys against the lions i want to cheer on the line yeah so purdy has been very very consistent for me putting up multiple touchdown games uh so i got the purdy uh debo hookup uh, Godwin, uh, I'm actually shocked that you're favored to win because <laughs> I'm really confident in my lineup. I think it's pretty solid, and I think yeah. that's what I'm going to go with this weekend. Yeah, well, Jaden Daniels, my quarterbacks have have high uh, projections, whether I go with Daniels or Allen. That will be a decision. Um, Tennessee's defense is pretty good, though, but you know Josh Allen's hard to sit. But Jaden Daniels going against Carolina seems like a layup matchup, so I might just stick with Jaden Daniels. Uh, Malik Neighbors is... He's projected for 16.6. Bijan also projected for 16. So those are some pretty high projections. Same with Kyron. Kyron's projected 17. Brees Hall, 17. So this could be a really fun matchup. Um, like I said, I'm just going to have some tough lineup decisions to to make. You'll be hearing from me this Sunday. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> um, then we have Becky and Tracy going up against each other. That's that's a pretty risky, tricky one because, like I said, Tracy's now sitting at three and three. So if Becky wins this matchup, then they're both three and four. There's a possibility another team's going to be three and four as well. So whether it's me or Malik, that you know Becky again is right back into things. Um, so right now, Tracy is projected to win. Um, Tracy is a juggernaut right now. I mean, if if. I don't know if Yahoo has power rankings, but she would be right up there in the power rankings. Yeah, she's going to get Justin Jefferson back right at the right time playing against Detroit. I don't think uh, Detroit's going to have as good of a matchup as they did last week against the Cowboys, uh, the Vikings. This is going to be an, a playoff atmosphere battle because it is for the NFC North lead at the moment. Um, if the Lions beat them, both teams will be at 5-1, and one, and Detroit will have the tiebreaker at the moment. So, big game there. So, Justin Jefferson could have a really big game himself. 
Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow up against Cleveland. That might be, you know, they're projected kind of high. Again, I I know Cleveland is a mess, but their defense isn't that bad that, you know, Cincinnati could get stymied a little bit. We saw Cleveland's defense hold up against Philadelphia today, uh, this past weekend. So maybe, you know, Cincinnati slowed down, but maybe they just run them over. Um, Alvin Kamara on Thursday night, he does have an injury um, at the moment. Yeah. Looks like he was just limited. It's a hand injury. So oh, okay. it, it looks like him. it should, it's probably just rest because they are playing on Thursday. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. Um, Sam Laporta, he's been okay. Working his way back. Yeah. Zay Flowers, he could have another big game because Tampa Bay, I'm sure, is going to push Baltimore in that game. Could be a potential shootout on Monday night. Joe Mixon has a good matchup against Green Bay. Um, the Jets playing against Pittsburgh, that could be a good matchup for them. Might actually get some points because Pittsburgh, they've been good, but they, they don't score a whole lot. Um, Javante Williams, I would assume, is going to the bench um, for, well, I don't know. Maybe maybe her hesitation on Chase Brown, too, is having too much of Cincinnati. Um, hopefully, if Brian Robinson is healthy this week, I'm sure that'll be the, the slot that he will um, jump right into against Carolina. That should be a, a good matchup for him. You said, uh, you know, originally you were questioning Becky's decision to start the Detroit defense against Dallas. This week they're facing the Vikings. Now, yeah. her Dallas defense has no game this week, so she really doesn't have a choice but to start uh, Detroit defense against the Vikings. How do you feel about that? Yeah, unless she wants to go pick somebody up. Um, I don't hate it, though, because... You know, as good as Sam Darnold has been, he has shown signs of his old old self of throwing turnovers. Yeah. Um, so there's some potential there. Um, the Lions are really good at stopping the run, so they could cause some problems. I don't know if Aaron Jones is going to play, so it might be Ty Chandler. So they might be with their backup running back, be able to stop that. Again, the hardest part is not knowing how they're going to be without Aiden Hutchinson. Yeah. I think that's the most nerve-wracking part. Um, so that is a bit risky. Maybe she could look at streaming. The most disappointing thing for Becky is she has to replace Brandon Aubrey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. By. I didn't even notice that. That's probably uh, her leading scorer. And he's um, a kicker. You talked about Butker being able to, you know, survive waivers. Brandon no, Aubrey is somebody you cannot drop you as can't a kicker. Flat out drop him. So she's gonna have to drop someone on her bench to pick up a kicker this week. That's yeah. brutal. Uh, she's also gonna have to watch the status of Marvin Harrison Jr. Now yeah. the nice thing is they play Monday night. So he does get an extra day to clear concussion protocol, but it's typical that they usually miss at least a week. So she's most likely going to have to make a replacement, whether that's going to be Jalen Waddell or George Pickens. I'm not entirely sure. It seems like the NFL has been erring on the side of caution because I was surprised that neighbors missed two full games. Yeah. Uh, so Becky, prepare yourself for not having Harrison uh, for two weeks possibly. Yeah, and if she could knock off Tracy this week, she is only about two weeks away from potentially getting Christian McCaffrey back, mm. and that is when Becky's team could be a nightmare yeah. to play against. So this will be a, a fun matchup, I think, um, to see if Becky can claw her way back in. Um, let's go to the next one I have is Ian and Sammy. Sammy, once again, desperately needing a win. He is favored in this matchup. Um, he is. We'll see. Joe Flacco's at a zero, though, right now, um, so that'll change things. Because they don't know if Joe Flacco is going to start or not. Oh, right. So that's kind of a big deal. If not, Ian will have to go back to Justin Herbert or maybe go to the waiver wire. Um, Justin Herbert playing against Arizona, not a bad matchup. But they don't throw the whole the ball a whole lot. Um, looks like Sammy set his lineup. He's sitting Jordan Mason and James Cook at the moment, hmm. fearing that they may still be out for this week. Yeah. Another we'll wait and see kind of thing. Dottles on a bye. Yeah. So he has Josh Jacobs, Wandale Robinson, A.J. Brown, Tank Dell, Jonathan Taylor, and Devon Achan. Problem is, I don't like I said, I don't know if Jonathan Taylor is going to be healthy this week. Yeah. I don't know if Devon Achan is going to be back this week. So Sammy might have some injury things to watch throughout the week as practices uh, continue. But it's pretty terrifying. Um, Ian looks like he should have his full strength of lineup. Like I said, the, the interesting thing will be what – does Garrett Wilson look like now that they have Devontae Adams? And it doesn't look like he has to really make any uh, big decisions going forward. Maybe Evan Ingram. Maybe that could be a decision, but I don't know how you really sit Brock Bowers now. No. So, yeah, 
that's that's tricky. But again, two buddies going at it. That'll be a fun matchup to see those two trash talk. <laughs> and then uh, another little rivalry matchup that we have is uh, Malik taking on Marie for the final matchup of the week. Um, once again, Malik's going to have to watch injury reports as well because he might be running into somewhat of the same situation as he did last last week. And if that's the case, um, he's coming in for the for our podcast on Thursday. I'll walk him through some moves that he can do, <laughs> um, and maybe we'll get that situated. Marie does have CeeDee Lamb on by and DeAndre Swift, so she's probably the most affected mm. um, by this bye week. Yeah, Like I said, she's going to have to make the decision of whether to start Patrick Mahomes or Jared Goff. Looks like she's going with Jared Goff because she set the rest of her lineup. Um, so that's an interesting decision. Um, I kind of like it, though. But Minnesota's defense has been good, so it'll be a little nervy. That's going to be a fun game to watch this weekend. Yeah, uh, you know that NFC uh, North division uh, are all they all have winning records, and so going up against uh, a division rival, this is going to be a fun one. Yeah, uh, they both teams have something to prove, and uh, I can't wait. Yeah, can't wait. It. I think we we talked about it off air, but like that's the kind of game that is almost annoying to me because they're a one o'clock game and I like to sit and watch red zone and just not worry about the lines. I would rather the lines be the four o'clock slate because usually there's not as many games that I care about mm -hmm. or a primetime game. And this is going to be, like I said, a, like a playoff atmosphere game and it's a one o'clock game. So I'm going to be paying close attention to that. So I'm basically going to put all my other uh, fantasy things off to the wayside and not keep up with them as much as I normally would on a Sunday, just because that game is so important and it should be fun. How do you feel about uh, Cooper being in the lineup? Uh, if it's going to be his first week with Buffalo, do you start him? As well, I, I would, I mean, I would start him no matter what, I think, just really? because, you know, that he's been in the league long enough. Josh Allen has been in the league long enough. I think they would be able to mesh pretty quickly. Um, the only thing I would watch is just if they can get his physical done quick enough and things like right. that. Most of the time, they're usually on pace. Um, but I would just watch it as the week goes on. If by chance they can't get the transaction completed um, by Sunday, then you know you have to change it. But I would yeah. stick with it just because it. I think it could be an immediate change to that Buffalo offense. All right, so It'd be interesting. Yeah, we have a couple. Like I said, we have we have some trades now that have happened in the actual NFL. So there's going to be a big shakeup in fantasy. And then after this week, we don't have any big bye weeks for a couple weeks, I believe. Um, and then it gets scary because we get to week 12 and 14 are the big, big bye weeks where a lot of teams are gone. So those will be the scary ones. So you got to get your wins in now. <laughs> um, and once again, hit that waiver wire. Look for any possible trades that you got. And uh, good luck to everyone. And we'll see you guys after week seven.